When the Super Soaker was first invented, it was an absolute game changer in my neighborhood. So now that I'm a dad and I know how to engineer, I decided to once again level up my water fighting capabilities with this. The Guinness World Record holding largest water gun ever at seven feet long. As a follow up, of course, to my world record largest Nerf gun. But she doesn't just look good, so I'm going to show you how we made it, how she stacks up against the original Super Soaker, and then we'll talk about the science behind how it works. But first, let's just take a moment to appreciate the destructive power of a stream of water traveling at 272 miles per hour. are great, but I wanted to see how she would fare in a real water fight in addition to running some further tests. But before we get to those, let's talk about how we made it and how it works. Together with my buddy Bob and his glorious beard, we created a skeleton for the gun. In fact, I won't show it here, but if you want all the gory details on how to construct a large scale replica like this, he uploaded a full video on his awesome YouTube channel called I Like To Make Stuff. I'll put a link in the video description. And in the end, after some EVA foam and a paint job, we ended up here. So let's take a look under the hood to see the design I arrived at with my buddy Ken. The first thing you should notice is that most of the mass is down here in the handle, not up here. And that's because having a low center of mass is really helpful for stability and maneuverability for something really large like this. All the components you see here are just a fancier version of all the components that make up this gun. It operates on the exact same principles. So let's start by talking about how this one works. And to do that, I figured we might as well ask the actual original inventor of the Super Soaker, one of my personal engineering heroes, Lonnie Johnson. Of course, one of my first questions to him was how he even came up with this idea. You see, I got the idea in 1982. I was at the uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory working on the Galileo project at the time. In fact, I was doing experiments in my home, in the bathroom, in the evenings. I wanted to develop a heat pump that would use water as a working fluid instead of Freon. I had made these nozzles, I had them hooked up to a sink, and as I shot this stream of water across the bathroom, and I saw how powerful it was and how satisfying it was, I thought to myself, high pressure, high performance water gun would really be cool. As I talked more with Lonnie, he showed me the very first prototype he ever built of the gun. We talked about some of the clever design elements. For example, this tank here that holds the water doubles as the pressure container. So each time you pump, you are forcing more and more air into this spot, which makes it more and more crowded with air molecules, which increases the pressure. And when you pull the trigger, the air is pushing down on the water so hard, the only place it can go is through this tube and out the gun. And so this is why this tube is intentionally bent down like this, because no matter which way you tilt the gun it's always going to be below the water line and therefore water will come out and not air. And so now in our case instead of pumping we fill this tank up with high pressure nitrogen gas and then this tank is filled with about two gallons of water and just like the super soaker it has a tube that runs all the way down and is open at the bottom. So then this gas is at a really high pressure and it wants to get out. So when you pull the trigger and open the flow it pushes down on the top of the water which forces it up this tube and out at 272 miles per hour. And the trigger is just this ball valve joint here, but I thought it would be lame if every time you wanted to fire you had to turn some handle. So we have a pneumatic piston here that's also powered by the nitrogen, and then we have a solenoid that's connected to some AA batteries back there for power. And so when you push this button, it opens the ball valve and allows water to flow through until I release the button. I'll put a link to the CAD files we made along with a build list of all of the components we used in the video description if you wanna make something similar. Oh, one final cool feature is we have this cover here that's held on with rare earth magnets. So after you've shot a bunch and you need to refill the water and the gas, you can just easily access the fill valves through this window here. And now back to the gratuitous violence. Oh, whoa! 
It's a double rainbow all the way. For some context on the power of this gun, the original Super Soaker was pressurized to 40 PSI, and the pressure from the hose at your house is just a little more than around 50 PSI. A fire truck hose comes in at around six times that at 300 PSI. And this beast is eight times the pressure of a fire truck at 2400 PSI, which in hindsight is probably overkill. One final really cool feature of the gun is you can swap out the nozzle depending on what you're shooting. So this nozzle has a really small diameter opening, which leads to a high stream velocity, but lower overall water output. So it's good for cutting or puncturing stuff. Then this nozzle is basically wide open at a quarter inch. So it's a little lower velocity, but it's the maximum water output. So it's good for getting things drenched fast or breaking things with force. So now with the gun fully tested, I wanted to see how it would do in an actual water fight. So we got together for a party with some family friends, but to make things fair, we took turns picking guns. But of course I got first pick. Awesome, and I completely destroyed them until I ran out of water. Thanks for watching.